Hello and welcome to The Thrifty Author. I'm your host, Gail C. Martin, and today I want to talk about ARC groups. Now, what's an ARC? It's an advanced review copy, A-R-C, and that's leftover terminology from back in the day when publishers used to actually print uh, rough copies of books before they were final edited, before they had their pretty cover on them, so they could send them out in advance of publication to reviewers. Well, that whole system has largely gone away at this point because it was very expensive to do. And everything now is mostly uh, electronic arcs. So you're talking about having a version of your book in usually Mobi, EPUB, and PDF with the intent of sending it out to reviewers in the hope that they will write you a good review and of course help create that buzz that your book is something special and people ought to look for it. Now, why did I say in the hope that? Well, there's something very important that you need to keep in mind whenever you're working with advanced review copies. And that is that both Amazon and the Federal Trade Commission uh, want to make sure that you are not creating a pay for play or a quid pro quo here. So you can supply a reviewer with a review copy. You cannot require that reviewer to write a review You cannot require a reviewer to write a good review. It is a trust situation where you're working with people who have a track record as either blogger reviewers or um, consumer reviewers, and you're sending them the review copy in hopes that they will want to review it. And of course, Amazon and the FTC also want them to put that little line in there that says, I received a free copy of this from the author or the publisher. This is my honest review. Be very careful. You can't say in exchange for, because that sounds transactional, quid pro quo, that's a no, no. But having them say they received a free copy, this is their honest review. That's the way to go. It's an acknowledgement. And it's also um, saying that they are speaking independently. Now, how do you find people to read an ARC? And why is it an advanced review copy? Well, usually if you have a publication date, whether you're doing this indie or whether you're working with a publisher, it's nice to have people who have already read the book by the time it goes live on Amazon so that they can drop those reviews uh, within a few days of when the book goes live And of course that helps make the book more visible and more appealing to people who are just stumbling upon it in the also bots. You can create, you can can work with ARC readers in a couple of ways. Um, There are ARC review uh, services out there. This is not the same as paying people for writing a review. Paying people for writing a review is bad. ARC services companies have a group of people who have signed up to be volunteer ARC readers. They're not getting paid. They are just putting their names on the list saying, yes, I would like to read these. The ARC group charges you, the the author, for access to their list. You don't get their list, of course, but they will post your book to their list. And then anybody who wants to read it in the hope of writing a review may do so. So you are not paying the reviewers. They are not paying the reviewers. The same qualifications exist in that there is no quid pro quo. They are not required to write a review. Some ARC services groups will say, look, if you can't give the book at least a three, just please don't post a review at all. Okay, that's fair. Um, You're not forcing people to say something they don't mean. At the same time, it's insulating an author from paying for access to the service and then getting the book trash. So that's, that's a pretty fair thing. Not all ARC services do that. Some do, some don't. So the good thing here is that you've got a third party that has assembled people who are interested in writing with the potential to review, who hopefully have been trained on kind of knowing they need to turn this around fairly quickly and knowing how to write a good consumer review. 
The other thing is that there is a fair amount of trust here, but there is also the spirit of the law. And if, if you have somebody who signs up and says, yes, I want to be an ARC reviewer, but then they never ever write a review for anybody ever, the ARC service team is going to realize that this person is not keeping good faith and is going to drop them off the list. So there's some policing there to make sure that people are not abusing the system just to get free books. No, they may not write a review for every book they, they read. They may not like every book they read. They may not sign up for every book that comes available. But if they never do anything, then they're obviously in the wrong place. And the ARC review company weeds that out. Now, you can certainly build your own ARC team. If you have a Facebook group or a Facebook page, you can say, I need some ARC reviewers. I'd like to send this out. It's, it's an advanced copy. It may not be absolutely perfect, but it's pretty close. Who's interested in the hopes that if you like the book, you'll be willing to write a review? Again, same rules apply. You can't require it, but let them know that this is not just handing out free books. You're doing this in the hopes that they will like the book and review it. In this case, now you're responsible for tracking who signs up, whether or not they ever report back that they have written a review. And if people take the free books, never ever write a review, you're going to have to be the one to cut them off and go, you know, this really isn't just about handing out free books. At some point, the hope is that you're going to like something and, and review it. That's kind of what we're here for. So can't require it, but at the same time, you don't have to be taken advantage of. Um, of course, the nice thing about a review company is that they get to be the bad guy in those cases. Um, it's a little more awkward when you have to tell a reader, no, you've never reviewed anything I've sent you. So wouldn't you like to be a beta reader instead and maybe suggest things on a rougher draft that, that might need to be fixed or, or help proofread? Um, there are always ways to do that. Sometimes when you sign up for a blog tour, they will also uh, ask for ARCs. Um, in the process of putting together your blog tour, some of the blog review sites may say, hey, uh, you know, we'd like to write a review of that book while we're talking about it. It's another great way to get ARCs out into the world. ARCs are important because they are social proof. When you look at a book and it's got uh, 50 or 100 or 250 four-star reviews, if you've never heard of the author, you feel a little better about the fact that, eh, you know, an awful lot of people said they like this book. It's a little more risky when you see a book that doesn't have any reviews or doesn't have very good reviews. Those might not be accurate, but, well, you know, unless it's in KU and it's, it's kind of free for you, you're probably not going to take the time. So reviews are very important for authors. There is a little bit of a skill to writing reviews. And I have seen authors who have art groups who say, this is what makes a good review. Um, because if you've read reviews on Amazon, you know, some people kind of view them more as a book report. And that's not really the point of a review. It's not to reveal all the spoilers. It's to say, wow, this one kept me up till two in the morning. I, you know, I just couldn't put it down. I love the characters and I love the setting. And, and when is the next one coming out? that's more of a review. It's more about feelings and what you liked as opposed to, you know, paragraph by paragraph playback. So it's perfectly okay if you're working with your own art team to say, and by the way, you know, here's really a little more about what makes a review very um, powerful for other readers and the most helpful for the author you're trying to help. Because at heart, I think most ARC readers really just want to be part of the process. If they like your books, they want to help you out. They want to lend a hand. And this is a concrete way they can. There are so many people who are on very fixed budgets. And this is how they get their, their reading budget. Um, they're, helping re they're helping authors out. And it helps them out as well because it's, it's a way for them to uh, give back, but also get books when they're, they're on a fixed budget. So, you know, the, the whole idea of organizing an ARC team or using access to somebody else's ARC team, it's a longstanding 
tradition in publishing. Big name publishers, top New York publishers have been doing this for over a century. It's just a little different now in that these people are citizen journalists instead of uh, traditional journalists for magazines and newspapers. So give it a try. I found that it definitely helps visibility, definitely helps the book rise out of the clutter and get noticed and uh, helps the book get the attention that your book deserves. That's it for now. I'll see you online. Have a great day.